Well, this is actually kind of an interesting story to me. So have you ever heard of this little game behind me called Payday? Well, there was a third installment that was released a couple months ago. And it didn't do too terribly well. Now, supposedly, Starbreeze, the company behind the game that we're getting ready to discuss, has actually cut ties with its CEO. This is interesting. So we're going to talk about it. I found an article from IGN. This is the only article I've been able to find on this. So I'm not sure, like, how much of this is, like, actually going on. But there was one article. So let's get into this article. Don't forget, you guys, mash that like button. Subscribe. And uh, comment down below what's your thoughts on this. Because this is kind of like a different subject. Because usually it's, you know, mass layoffs, shutdown of a company. But no, this time... It's the CEO getting the axe. Let's go! <laughs> Starbreeze CEO out after Payday 3 disaster. The execution of strategy needs a different leadership. I'm wondering what company he's going to go to next. Because like I've talked to this before and I swear to God that... Companies change CEOs like they change underwear. Like, I swear to God, like one day Starbreeze might be like, I don't like this pair of underwear. They throw it out, and EA's like, Son of a bitch, I want that. Like, I, I swear, when it comes to CEOs and these upper echelon, like people that are in charge of stuff, a lot of, a lot of them, I, it's got to be money laundering. Like, I swear to God, because they'll drive a company into the ground. Next thing you know, they're in charge of a different company. It don't make sense. The CEO of Starbreeze has exited the company following the disastrous launch of Payday 3. Mind you, this was five days ago this article came out, and Payday 3 came out in September. Tobias was the boss of the Swedish developer for three years, overseeing its recovery from a near-total collapse and the release of co-op shooter Payday 3 in September. Now, I will admit, I was super excited when I heard that they were releasing Payday 3 because, don't get me wrong, Payday 2 was an amazing game. It was a great, great game. And I played quite a bit of Payday 2. Um, but Payday 3, when I started reading about the reviews and what people had to say about it, I'm like, hold up. Wait a minute. Do not spend your money. Payday 3 was billed as Starbreeze's next big game, and the developer had high hopes in what would enjoy the kind of success that would secure the company's future for years to come. However, Payday 3 suffered a disastrous launch that was plagued by server issues that was forced to apologize. We are so sorry the infrastructure did not hold up as expected, and although it's impossible to prepare for every scenario, we should be able to do better, he said at the time. I genuinely really wonder how many people actually played this game at launch. And if that's so, like, why were they having such big issues? Now, mind you, Payday 3, as of right now, is on Game Pass. So if you want to check it out, you potentially check it out that way. But I would not pay the money for it. Then, almost a month after launch, Starbreeze apologized again for its lack of communication. So they took a page out of Epic's playbook like they do for Rocket League. Um, and just a week later said sorry one more time for not delivering on a pr promised patch. It said in January 2024 it was a well aware of fans weren't satisfied. Um, this goes back into a lot of things I say and that is we as consumers need to vote with our wallets. That means do not pay money for games that are going to be this way. And I feel bad because a lot of people will buy a game. And this is the problem when it comes to, I'd say, the last two generations of consoles. It was really bad during the Xbox One era and the PS4 era. And, of course, it's continued on into the Series X and the PS5. Um, and that is the release of games that are not ready to be released. There's been a lot of games that have suffered issues like this. Now, granted, they had their fair share during the 360 and PS3 era as well, but it's become really re like prevalent during the last two console generations. We're just going to base it on console, not PC, because PCs like they're the master race. They do their own thing. And that is, like I said, games being released before they should be, and games that are not ready to be released. 
because companies believe they can patch and patch and patch and patch and patch these games until they are better. And no, you need to hold their feet to the fire when it comes to big companies like this being like, hey man, you need to actually release a game that is workable. It is, it's, excuse my French, <clears throat> bullshit, that they're going to, they, they think that the game can be released in this situation. Embracer Group, which owns Payday 3's publisher Palion and is having significant troubles of its own, said an invest, uh, in its investment in the game was recouped at, as of the end of September, less than two weeks after launch. But Embracer also said Payday 3's ongoing contribution to the company's bottom line would be below management expectations due to the soft, uh, due to a softer launch. Mm. All right. Most recently in February, Starbreeze admitted the high shooter was performing significantly lower than it would like in both sales and player engagement. Payday 3 sales and player activity are currently at significantly lower levels than we would like, it said. Improving Payday 3 was said to be the company's biggest focus going forward. Um, I can, I can see that only because like Payday 2, I, I want to say Payday 2 has been out for like 10 years. It's been out for a long time. And... The problem with that being said, it's almost as if it's a uh, games as a service because you got to purchase the game and then the DLC and then the DLC and then the DLC and then the DLC and it just keeps going. It doesn't stop. Like I, there's so many DLCs for Payday 2. I think that's where they were trying to go for Payday 3. Excuse me. Water's good, by the way. You guys don't forget to drink your water today. Starbreeze boasted Payday 3 had 3.1 million players as of October 2nd, but this number has dwindled, at least on Steam, as many more players are currently playing Payday 2 than its sequel. According to SteamDB, Payday 3 has a 24-hour peak of just 378 players, compared to Payday 2's 31,866, 31, despite the latter launching over a decade ago. Payday 3 has an overwhelmingly negative recent user review rating on Steam. Ooh. Now that uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce homie's name is out, replaced by current board member, uh, that guy, Jurgen, as interim CEO of Starbreeze. Uh, Golder's last executive position was CEO of Focus Home Interactive and has been a board member of Starbreeze since last year. Starbreeze has a recruitment process for a permanent CEO and has been in initiated. In a statement, Starbreeze chairman uh, failed to point out that Payday's 3 failure as a reason for his exit, instead saying the ex execution of strategy needs to be a different leadership and will be available to Starbreeze for a smoother transition. That's code for it. They're mad because he keeps apologizing. And on top of that, like, the lack of, uh, what, how can I word this? The lack of transparency also hurts them. On behalf of the board of directors, I would like to thank uh, Tobias for his achievements during the past three years. Um, Tobias took over the helm of Starbreeze in a challenging phase of its journey, and we wish him well in the future endeavors. Ah, that's a rough one, man. Especially... With how, like I said, Payday 3 has not been doing well. As for, as for what's next for Starbreeze, it has quite the job of turning Payday 3 around while also maintain, maintaining Payday 2, which remains one of the more popular games on Steam. Elsewhere, Star, Starbreeze is working on an officially licensed Dungeons & Dragons games due out in 2026. The untitled game, codenamed Project Baxter, will carry this uh, the signature Starbreeze game, Cornerstone, a cooperative multiplayer lifetime com commitment through a game and service model, commitment, engagement, and a large than life experience. Let's go full screen. Like I said, it's just it's just weird to me that Homie was like let go, and a lot of what they're saying is that uh, they 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 need a leadership to go elsewhere well in my opinion why isn't the whole board gone don't get me wrong like um the ceo is the captain of the ship but the board members also have 
say in what's going on. So why are you giving the CEO a boot when the board members should be held just as accountable as that CEO, but yet they're taking one of those board members and throwing them in the position? Like I said, it's money laundering, I swear to God. But it's just one of those things to think about. They want to please the shareholders and they want to be able to show, hey, look, our balance sheet. And like I said, it's this is a much different story than I was anticipating because, like I said, usually you hear about layoffs at companies. You hear about studios shutting down, especially after a launch like this that didn't go too well. Anyways, you guys, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think this is like, you know, like I think, like there's something fishy. Anyways, you guys, have a wonderful day. Don't forget, mash that like button, subscribe. Every little bit helps. We're on our way to 8,000 subscribers. You guys are fucking awesome. Keep doing what you're doing, and I'll catch you later.